बिसमीम हेलो एंड वेलकम टू रहमान डिजिटल प्रोडक्शन दिस इज़ लेक्चर नंबर नाइन्टी फिफ्थ ऑफ फिज़िक्स एंड इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू कंक्लूड दिस टॉपिक विद द लास्ट क्वेश्चन व्हिच इज ऑफ एडवांस टाइप सो let us first understand the question this is question number 5 on the converging lenses the question is saying that a collector weave a postage same of height 2 cm i have written here for you people the data the height of the stem is 2 cm through a hand lens place 2.8 cm from the stem so it mean this is an object distance and that is 2.8 cm next information is the image he sees appear to be magnified 3 times so magnification of the image is 3 times that of the original image now the first part is saying that state the type of the lens used for the uh, hand lens so very simply we are saying that this is the converging lens because converging lenses are always used to magnify the object and you can see an enlarged image after seeing it through the lens so this type of lens is called uh, converging lens now the second part of this question is saying the collector weaves the letter on the stem shown full size below in the space on the right sa- right side draw to full size the magnified image that will be seen using the hand lens i drew it for you people this is the original given uh mh and because the magnification is 3 time so we have to magnify this image on every aspect to 3 times that of the original image so they given us the different dimensions in which the height of this letter is 10 mm so if it is magnified 3 times then we have to draw a line of 30 mm as you can see in the enlarged image so that is 30 here we are having 8 mm so when 8 is multiplied with 3 so it means that this will be uh this image will be 24 mm as you can see that from the enlarged size similarly because this area is 1 mm so when we increase the size this is 3 mm everything will be magnified 3 times so i did exactly the same when you are drawing it on a piece of paper you have to first measure the height whatever the height it and if they are asking to magnify it two times then you have to multiply that height with the two but in this case they are asking to magnify it three times the magnification of the lens is given as three time so we have to multiply that with three and as a result we will get 30 mm of height 
and the length is the width is 8 millimeter of the original image so when we multiply this width with 3 so it will be 24 millimeter similarly 1 millimeter will become uh, 3 millimeters so in this way you can draw an image and I drew it for you people in the form of this image and you can see that this is three times larger than the original image okay that was the story about the b part now the c part of this question is a long one there are two parts inside the c so let us understand in the diagram on the right i made the diagram with the white and yellow line nothing else is given in the question the red line the green line uh, and the image line is drawn after understanding the question so only stem lens and principal axis is given to you in the question and they are saying that in the diagram on the right the horizontal line represent the principal axis of the hand lens the stem and the lens are represented by vertical lines is shown now the stem is shown by a small yellow line on the left side of the lens which is blue vertical line and it is labeled as uh, lens as well and you can see a very long horizontal line labeled with principal axis now you know that what is principal axis principal axis is that line which is passing through the optical center without any deviation so here this uh, information is available now further they are saying remembering that the image is upright and has a magnification of three calculate the height of the image and draw a line parallel to the principal axis to represent the height of the image so first i drew this parallel line red tell the uh, lens and then not i drew this line first of all i drew this green line which is passing without any deviation from the optical center because no focal length is given to us so we cannot drew this red line after passing the uh lens we have to wait so whenever we are passing this line from the optical center without any deviation and then we have to measure the height of this object note it down and make it three times make it three times and we have to make this yellow line three times the size of this object and we have to bring it in in such a position that it touches the green line now we don't have up till now the red line so we are drawing this green line 
a yellow line and touching that green line uh, again so wherever this yellow line is touching this green line we have to bring that yellow line here and then we will draw this red line uh, cutting that green line at the position where the yellow line is touching this uh, uh, green line so that will be the intersection position of the uh, green and red line and we have to uh, uh, these two lines according to the given scenario they are saying remembering that the image is upright and has a magnification of three calculate the height of the image and draw a lens pa a, a line parallel to the principal axis to represent the height of the image yes we did only this line now next they are saying draw a line to represent a ray of light from the top of the stem passing through the center of the lens so this green line is they are saying that it is passing through the center of the lens and you know when a ray is passing from the optical center it will pass without any deviation and they are saying using a dotted line extend the line you have just drawn backward to locate the position of the image so you have to extend that line and we will be able to locate the position of the image now the in the first part when you are seeing the uh, image they are saying measure the distance of the image from the lens image distance from the lens when i calculated this that was 4.6 cm and that is the answer of part number 1 which i wrote it here that is the part number 1 the distance of the object from the lens which is a vertical blue line and the distance is between the vertical blue line and the vertical uh, yellow line we are having this scenario okay that was the whole story about the first part now for the second part they are saying now draw a line parallel to the axis to represent a ray of light from the top of the stem to meet the lens by considering where this ray meets the lens and the position of the image draw a line to like locate the position of one of the focal points uh, principal foci of the lens now they are saying draw this line this red line so that you can locate the position of the principal focus and we i told you that you have to draw a line which will meet the junction of this yellow line and this green line so these are the two points then we have to draw that red bending line after passing the lens 
so they are saying in this long dissertation like a uh, scenario at the end they are doing a very small question and that is measure the focal length of the lens the focal length of the lens is this area and when i measured it with the ruler then we found it to be 2.4 cm so that is the answer of this second when you are drawing it and doing all these activities practically on a piece of paper then you will find these two answer as i did now the final part of this question is saying explain why it is unlikely that the observer could see this image clearly if his eye was almost touching the lens so because the image is not formed on the convex lens rather it is formed on the screen so if you are putting your eye on the lens so the image will form far behind your retina the back of your retina and that will not be visible clearly to you people because it is not form on the retina of your eyes when gradually and slowly you are moving your eyes from the lens and moving toward the screen gradually the image will be uh, looking clearer to you people and when your eye is reaching a position where we can place the screen to see the image sharp and clearly then you will be able to see the image clearly because now the image will be portrayed on your eyes retina perfectly all right and you will be able to see the image uh ladies and gentlemen with this we reach to the end of this topic i'm not going to uh start the next topic in today's lecture don't want to confuse you our next topic is sound which is very very important topic as far as physics and engineering is concerned there is a special branch for dealing these sorts of problem which is related to the sound and that is called acoustics so acoustics are not only used by the physicists but also the engineers when they are creating a big halls so how they will control the reverberation of sound in that ha hall they are keeping all these things in eyes so first of all if you want to become an engineer you must have to understand physics physics is the main topic not only in engineering but also in the medical field as well how because if the doctors are using stethoscope that is based on the physics if they are using the x rays they are the invention of physics if you are doing endoscopy light is also the invention of physics if you are doing 
any sort of computer related activities so computer is also the invention of solid state physics so if you are doing computer tomography in the case of ct scan uh, if you are doing mri magnetic resonance imaging so these are all the inventions of uh, physics just like if you are familiar with the name Irnam Hospital so it means that Institute of Radiotherapy and Nuclear Medicine so nuclear medicine and radiotherapy in the diagnosis of cancer is also the invention of uh, physics so physics is greatly involved in every field of science just like we are having physical chemistry so physics is involved in chemistry there is no chemistrical physics but physical chemistry is there so it is involved in the physics i mean that physics is such an important part of science that you cannot ignore it either in engineering whether it is electrical engineering whether it is electronics whether it is uh, civil engineering whether it is mechanical engineering everything are using this concept of physics in my view from my perspective if somebody is understanding the concept of physics clearly then there will be no difficulty to that person in any field of uh, life that is why physics is studied not only inside engineering but also in medical as well now in medical you are not studying mathematics very less portion of mathematics is involved in uh, medical although there is a branch in which great deal of mathematics is involved and i always uh, telling my student that mathematics is the mother of science every branch of science is derived from mathematics physics is the practical application of mathematics that is why it is physics is also called applied math now those who are might be few people are not uh, agree with me but it is the fact that those people who understand mathematics physicist are understanding uh, mathematics more than those people who are the master of mathematics because the practical application which is called applied mathematics is the uh, branch in which we are physically using this uh, uh, mathematics so we are understanding it quite well uh, but remember that on the other hand mathematic mathematics is the mother of each science in every field of life you must be needing uh, calculation to perform certain activities okay tomorrow we will turn our focus to another very important aspect of this physics acoustic so stick to this channel subscribe it if you haven't yet subscribe it if you are new to this channel please subscribe it 
uh, and those who uh, subscribed it thank you very much for your loyalty have a nice time allah hafiz